Day three of our trip exploring the Magnetowan River saw our group of four portaging a beautiful waterfall early on. Ahead of us on this day lay several challenging whitewater rapids and some tough portaging to deal with before finding a place to camp. Good little trick in case you ever break your carrying yoke. The side of your carrying yoke breaks off, that's where they typically break. If it breaks in the middle because you dumped and it squashed on a rock, well then you need to splint it. But for this, quick, easy fix. So anyways, I better get this portage over with now. Come afternoon the following day, we'd hope to be finished this four day adventure to explore the wild Lower Magnetowan River. again gosh darn it golly gee willikers fiddlesticks not a target species by anyone worth their salt well that's disappointing Pulling, it's fighting like a pick. Oh, ho, ho. oh, it's a dink pike. It's a lot bigger than the last one. Just using a little uh, Mr. Trister grub and a uh, jig head. We got a keeper. Definitely a lot smaller than what I typically keep, but uh, you know, enough for one person and a little bit of. A little bit of an hors d'oeuvre for everyone else but hopefully we can get into something else but all i have for dinner tonight is uh is uh, a small can of soup so i need the food this big old logging chain from the logging days obviously used to drive logs down this sh short chute here obviously this cedar tree has grown quite a bit since that that could essentially kill the tree that could be over a hundred years old if not more I'm ever doing a lining quite like that. So they portaged their gear, lined the canoes. Me and Ted ran loaded. This is three sni, and the last one, the bigger one, is Five Finger Falls. These were probably named by uh, loggers when they drove logs down the Magnetowan River to Georgian Bay. And uh, that's why you see that big logging chain uh, there is used to help guide logs down. Um, so that's kind of cool. We're gonna jump in the boat and continue heading towards $30. Good boy. Good boy. Come on, North. <laughs> 
That was awesome! Good boy! Good boy! And there it is, Train Trestle Rapid. That amps the stakes up for the rest of us three. Woo! Well, <laughs> as you can see, I didn't make that one. Man, honestly, I was feeling a little overconfident probably. Just chose a line that was kind of stupid and bombed sideways into a hole <laughs> not even close so hopefully these guys can learn from my mistakes and do a little better well I'm glad I didn't want to do Jim's line I'm gonna do the inside line uh, yeah At least if you're gonna dump, you might as well spectacularly barrel into a hole, you know? Just like embarrassed that I'm like, oh, this is the way guys, you know? And then like everybody shows me up. standing waves.
This is the embarrassingly small pike I caught earlier. But because if I don't eat this, all I have is a half a can of chunky soup that might have gone bad. I'm doing the five cut technique. After I take off the back strap, I just cut down on the outside of the ribs here. Uh, I think the, uh, the cold fronts really what did us in on the fishing here. And the same thing on the other side. Not a bad piece of meat off of this little pike. And then essentially fillet off the back. Just using my uh, cold steel commercial series fillet knife for the job here. So you got your five cut, this you cut in half. One, two, three, four, five. And you take the skin off. North's guarding the pike. Why, thank you, North. I'm sure you have the best intentions in mind. The burial is nice, man. Black and spruce country. Yeah. I'm just kind of putting some pressure on the knife, on the flat side. This one, this one's a little more tricky. You can remove, there's, there'll be a strip of bones down the middle. can remove those bones by just cutting here and the other side but I'm just gonna eat it bone in which is not good when it comes to fit there we go that's a pretty good piece of meat there all right there's our five pieces one two, three, four, five. Not a bad little stack of meat for that small pike. And it'll definitely round up my meal tonight. I'm just gonna go down to the river and wash these off. Ted's got the tent set up. Fine young broth of a lad. Yeah. Really? 
Yeah, that's half of it. I'm gonna make some coffee too, eh? Save another bite for Max, but I gave him a bite of mine. Uh, minimal bones too. Mm. Right? Could deal with a little more of that, eh? Good job. Thank you. Uh, Fish being 70, 70 to 200. North. Well, here we are at the end of the day. Ted's just making his experiential lasagna. And uh, I got a can of soup on the fire. Um, wish I'd caught a bigger pike, but I shared some of the uh, fish with Ted and Max. Sandra didn't want any because he just brushed his teeth and it would be been too weird. Um, I get that, you know. Um, <laughs> And there really wasn't a lot, but man, was it ever delicious. It really hit so the spot. Good. We're right at the base here, $30 Rapids. Tomorrow we have about 15 kilometers left. We have a short portage and a bunch of what I hope are fun, runnable rapids and some current. Uh, so still a good little stretch to get back to where we left our vehicles, that Bing Inlet on Georgian Bay. So um if all goes well we'll be out of here tomorrow i'm just gonna eat this can of soup and we're probably gonna kick it by the fire a bit might have a cup of coffee and uh call the night so another great day on the magnetowan river yeah Six a.m. wake up, and uh, there is about 15 clicks left of portage, and um, at least two other solid rapids that need to be scouted. Uh, but I believe are going to be fun, runnable rapids. Um, I don't know if I'll get a ton of time to fish, but um, you know, I'm thinking maybe if I get a chance to wet a line today, I'll do it if it's not going to suck into too much time, and uh, maybe bring um, a fish fry home for Tori, which always sort of softens the blow when i'm like yeah can you just take care of the two kids for four days while i go out there and you know fish and high five you know a bunch of buddies so <laughs> that always helps if i come home with fresh fish for dinner beautiful stretch of river with a good bit of current is in front of us so i'm excited to get on the river shouldn't take too much longer before we're packed up and on our way That feels pretty big. <sighs> big old pike. Not massive, but good size. <sighs> Boom! 
Yeah, baby. Yeah, good size. Nice. Yeah, there's a lot of meat on that. I'm gonna keep it. Using this uh, MAPS Cyclops 2. I love that there's a smashed in boat over there, that's fun. I think probably like it's bony up there, but if you're just to run far left. I, the tongue, and then just kind of trying to make your way to the right. Coming up to one of the last rapids, um, I'm gonna try to take a sneak route down the left because uh, the main flow is pretty much unrunnable, but there's gonna be some boulders we gotta dodge here. The highway bridge. We made it! Still a little bit to go. With another adventure down the Magnetowan River over, I'm reminded of how lucky I am to live on this river and have this lasting wild place that has somehow escaped road development right in my backyard. Back in civilization. 
with this one in the books, I've just come off of back-to-back-to-back multi-day adventures, starting with a spring backcountry camping trip with the family, followed by an intense solo whitewater adventure. Then, I did the Northern Ontario trout fishing trip, and finally this one. At this point, I haven't seen Tori and the kids much in the last several days. And with the season pushing on, we've left a ton of work to do around our house to the last minute, primarily planting our vegetable gardens, as at our latitudes, if it's left too late, there won't be enough time to grow any food. We have to make fertile soil, build two large raised beds, till the land, weed, and plant two three sisters gardens of corn, beans, and squash, among many other things. I'm coming home from my trips with some fresh fish for the freezer to add to our remaining moose meat. But this year, we're really hoping to be able to grow and preserve a good amount more food. With some awesome spring adventures behind us, it's time to roll up our sleeves and get some work done before heading off on the next round of trips. I bought nearly two yards of topsoil from a local farmer. It's essentially cow manure that's been aged about six years. It cost me 50 bucks, which is a heck of a lot cheaper than buying it per bags from the store. But you can pull out the rest of that because I can't seem to get my shovel underneath it. Wait, this is abnormal. It's not right. But for it to be this hot, just, it's not heat. It's June 1st. It's just out of control. Yeah, it's been weird. After laying in a 4x8 raised bed made of 2x12s, we rip out all the weeds along the floor. Then, I begin throwing in logs, sticks, bark, and whatever other organic material I can find. This would serve as fertilizer as it slowly rots over the years to come. Next, we'd fill it with topsoil. We use some uh, smelt to fertilize this garden. And uh, we have a bunch of pumpkins coming up from last year. But the pumpkins, this was a three sisters garden. And the pumpkins, to be honest with you, they were a little too aggressive um, of a squash. So I wouldn't do them again in a three sisters garden. Um, so we're probably gonna dig those up and replant them somewhere else. This one was just made with a uh, half inch plywood, which was what we had. We planted apple trees last year and I was super excited to see some blossoms on them this spring. I tied the small apple trees off to stakes to protect their roots from tearing from the winter winds and I removed the mesh that I put over them to protect them from the deer. Next, I had to take load after load of topsoil up the steep hill from the trailer to fill our new raised bed and to top up the one from last year. This took many, many trips. While I was doing that, Tori had another project on the go. She was getting the vegetable garden on our front porch ready. The spot gets a lot of sun. Instead of putting it in large planters, Tori uses grow bags, which can be lifted, transported, and stowed easily. She fills them up with soil that we made from topsoil, from the host soil on our property, and also from compost. And in them, she plants tomatoes, peppers, cucumbers, and some other vegetables that she'd actually sown from a seed indoors before the outdoor planting season started. She even put in a hummingbird feeder, which just looks awesome. What are you doing? There, yeah, that is a fish. Very smart, Hudson. Bubbles and fish. 
buttercup squash. We've got tomatoes, which don't look like they're doing too well, but we'll keep an eye on them. Celery. Some more tomatoes. And all of our peppers. When watering the plants, water does pass through the grow bags. So Tori props up the grow bags on these slats that are lifted off the ground on screws that we screwed into the slats partway. This prevents the port from rotting under the pot due to moisture. Tori also added a couple of beautiful flowering plants in order to attract pollinators to this upper deck. These are pumpkins that were naturally growing in my raised bed here because I last uh, fall I put pumpkin guts in there and they sprouted so the, the seed stayed all winter and I had a ton of pumpkin sprouting just from essentially the compost. And so I added some ash to it and uh, I added some, uh, some smelt that I just let rot in here. Um, as fertilizer but corn takes up a lot of nitrogen um, and so what I'm doing here is I'm just taking sheet manure and uh, this sheet manure it's, it's aged but it's probably too it's too acidy to grow in directly so I'm just sprinkling a layer of sheet manure over top of everything I'm pretty confident this is going to be some good organically rich soil for growing my three sisters garden. Shake and feed that has all organic ingredients. Kelp, earthworm casing, feather meal and bone meal in it. And just adding it to this topsoil that I got from the farmer. And that will slowly leach into the ground. I'm going to give this a big soak before planting. This is what corn looks like, just basically a kernel, corn kernel that's dried. Keep them in there. I have a bunch of these smelt that Tori and I caught. We didn't clean these ones. So I'm going to put one smelt underneath each piece of corn. With all my corn planted, I'd need to wait a couple weeks or so until the corn sprouted and was four to six inches tall. Next, I'd plant the beans in order to give the corn a head start so the beans would have something larger than it to climb up. Then the squash goes in. Sometimes they say it's good to put two uh, seeds. The idea with the Three Sisters Garden is that the, uh, the beans grow up the corn stalks because beans need something to grow up. And uh, the squash covers the ground with its big leaves and prevents weeds from growing. Um, so they all complement each other like that. But also they help each other with the nutrients they need. They don't take, they don't fight with each other. Not, they're not taking the nutrients each other needs and actually they help each other. The, the peas add nitrogen to the soil. So it's important to not plant a three sister garden. Corn at that side, peas on this side, you want to plant them all together. Next on the list, Tori and I built another raised bed using 2x12 screws. We just basically made a big rectangle, 4 feet by 8 feet, and screwed it together, hauled it up the hill, and put it in a good location between our two apple trees that would get a lot of sun. Well, I guess until the apple trees get big. Two square feet. He dumps that whole bubble thing. Yay! 
This is our pumpkin patch over here. This pumpkin we bought before we found that the pumpkin seeds from our compost had sprouted in our raised bed. Yeah, but the water's not cold. We're gonna do it. We're gonna do it. You can do it, bud. You, you can, can do, do it, it honey. Mm -hmm. You can do it, buddy. Mm -hmm. Come on, honey. Yeah. Come on, honey. Yeah. Yay. You can do it, bud. He bailed. That's a bail. That's a hard bail. Good try, honey. Good job, bud. That was great of you to climb up there. Good job, anyways. He went up and then he got scared that the water was cold. After playing with Huddy a bit, Wesley was at school this day and he took a long nap when he got home. I think he wasn't feeling that great. Anyways, once our raised bed was laid in, we did the same thing as the last. Clearing out a bunch of weeds and then adding logs, sticks, bark and other organic material to it before beginning to add the soil. Now, the farmer that I bought the topsoil from wasn't available anymore and we wanted to get this done. So I sprung and bought a bunch of topsoil from the store. Now this stuff can get expensive and we already spent a pretty penny on just what we bought. So what we did was we mixed it with our host soil. Well, I was saying, oh, I want to get a workout today. That is a caterpillar. Don't put it in the water. Can see? Can see? It's okay. There you go. Ooh, fuzzy caterpillar. A fish. 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 Yeah, he wants to fish with it. <laughs> you gonna fish with the caterpillar? <laughs> and essentially I just dug a hole beside the planter box and threw that soil right into it. I also got a couple wheelbarrows full of other soil on my property that was pretty good in a sort of swampy area and added that in. Then I mix it all together and then put in a bag of sheep manure to try to bring that nitrogen level back up for what I lost from the host soil here, which isn't very fertile. This is uh, sheep manure. This, this garden was gonna be used to plant root vegetables, mostly carrots, probably some potatoes and some broccoli, but Tori's gonna handle that one. Okay, well, a lot of mud on the old face here, but uh, I think that is about it for the day. Um, I got uh, some of the mesh and stakes taken off of my apple tree. I uh, got an entire planter filled with topsoil that I got from a farmer. Uh, fortunately, the farmer wasn't around anymore, so we opted to just drive to town and buy some topsoil. Uh, it wasn't enough to mix the new raised bed that we also built out of uh, one by 12 spruce and I mixed that with some of the host soil because it's expensive to buy that much bag topsoil so I wanted to mix it as much as I can then I added some sheep manure to it and uh, I'm feeling pretty good about that actually. Good. I'll feed Wes in the meantime while you're cooking up. 
feel like I need to like finish. Let's imagine Elmo I'm cooking up one of the lake trout that I caught on my trout fishing trip north of Massey, Ontario. And I'm gonna cook it up in one of my favorite ways to do trout. My favorite recipes is um, is essentially baking it um, on low heat in the barbecue. I put uh, I make like um, like kind of like a basket I guess with tin foil, um, just open face instead of completely wrapping it. I leave it open face, little old bay on there, touch of salt, um, and then I put uh, garlic butter. I melt butter, add garlic powder too if you have fresh garlic that's better. Pour it all over it, pour it inside and then uh, bake it on low in the barbecue, cook it on low in the barbecue for about 15 uh, to 20 minutes, depending on how done you like it. I like mine uh, more on the uh, not overdone side. I like it juicy and just a delicious way to cook fish and great end to the day. Wow. It's been a while since I've cooked one of this perfectly. 
Yeah, it's really good. 